Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another Progressive Powerhouse Debate. Today we will be doing uh, a little less political, a little more philo philosophical. Um, today we will be debating uh, the existence of God. In the Atheist Corner we have my good friend and Progressive Powerhouse member, OmniFlow. And on the other side we have, um, who exactly are we debating? Weeb Apologist or is it Tota? Uh, Weeb Apologist and uh, with the Theist type house. Yes, so we've apologized with the theist type house, uh, is going to be the opponent in today's debate. Uh, I hope you all enjoy this wonderful debate. It's going to be really interesting, a lot of good arguments on both sides. Uh, so we'll get, into, we'll get into this, and I hope all of you enjoy uh, the rest of the debate. With that, um, I, I guess I'm your moderator tonight as well, so that's fine. Um, Let's start with uh, a bit of an opening statement from both sides. Uh, since we let the challengers go first, we apologists, you can make your opening statement right now. Okay, yeah, so I'll be arguing the affirmative in this argument um, that God does exist and that we can come to that conclusion. Um, I'm going to be using the, this is one of Thomas Aquinas' arguments, but I, I just call it the argument from causality. Um, I'm pretty sure Omni has already uh, heard this argument because uh, he made a critique video of it on his uh, page on TikTok. But yeah, I'll be arguing from that. And that's pretty much all. Huh. Yeah, so um, I'll essentially be critiquing this, the Thomas Aquinas version. I believe you're, are you talking about the uh, Edward uh, Ferris one? Like yeah. where he just revises it and then he makes the 50 fucking uh, <laughs> different like uh, points that have to go into the uh, conclusion, right? Oh uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, yeah. So I'll be going into that, and I'll be basically demonstrating how we can never, uh, we can't definitively, definitively draw a conclusion that God does exist because that would require uh, escaping the realm of metaphysics and entering like what we consider to be like uh, this like uh, logical necessity. Like we we only know uh, these certain ideas, therefore this has to be true. Instead, it's under the idea that well, we don't really know everything, therefore we can't make any definitive statements. Okay. So yeah. um. Am I supposed to go first since I'm arguing? Uh, well, you... I would say that, okay, so right now I think what we're just going to do is have like, um, so you guys, so, yeah, because in your opening statement, you guys uh, kind of just let out what you were going to say. Um, so I'd say that, I guess, uh, we've apologized. You I can, can ask since... you some stuff and see if you agree with it or not, right? Yeah, I mean, and I mean, I can have you like, defend yeah, your point and me like uh, talk about it. Sure, if that's how you want to go. I was going to ask him if you wanted to, like, lay out the argument for causality, if you wanted to, like, just lay it out. Not yeah, unless yeah, we're I kind of already, yeah. I kind of already know it, but, like, if you want well, to. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, just say it for yeah. people that I don't know yet. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so um, there's pretty much seven premises that I've laid out for it. So uh, premise one is change is the alterance of a quality that is actualized from prior existing potential. So an example of what this premise is saying is that cold water that became hot underwent the change of temperature, a quality of its actual being that existed in a potentiality previously. Um, premise two is things that change cannot actualize their own potential to change. The change must come from an external and distinct entity. So the, another example of this is the cold water cannot become hot on its own. Its potential to become hot must be actualized by something capable of heating. Premise three, the actuality of some of something's being is the description of its existence in its current form. So the cold water is actually cold because it contains the properties of being both cold and water. Um, premise four, entities and their actualizers must be essentially ordered in their pattern of causal actualization. So an example of essential order would be if my laptop is charging, it's connected to a charging cord, um, which is connected to an outlet, which is connected to an electricity pole, and then et cetera in that, um, in that manner. Premise five is all essential orders must be terminated in a first member because each entity has a direct causal relationship with the one that precedes and antecedes it, meaning that the subtraction of one member in the essential order terminates the actualization of all subsequent members. An infinitely long essential order cannot have, uh, cannot have a source for causal power as it has no first member, and causal power is only received from the previous member. If there is no source for causal power, causal power cannot exist. And if causal power does not exist, then this theory is inadequate at explaining cause and effect. Premise six, the universe is a closed system containing heat energy entailing the law of entropy. As the universe continues to expand, it will eventually reach an equilibrium and become colder. If the universe's level of heat changes, that means that it has the potential to be in both a, hot, a hotter and colder state than it currently is. Um, and its, be, and its current form is being actualized by an external force. 
thus meaning that there exists a first member which is immaterial and is the unactualized actualizer in the series. And then the conclusion based on those six premises is God. Oh, exists, yeah, the right? conclusion <laughs> is that uh, the, the unactualized actualizer must be God. I mean, yeah. I can. Do you want me to go into omnipotence and omniscience as well? I'd or? rather die because well, let's focus on the first part first. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So because this is like the the heat of it, so we can go into like oh we go from here we've proved an, an unactualized actualizer and now we have to prove that he is a benevolent being that is essentially the Christian God or whatever whatever the argument usually goes to. I, it's been seen a lot, but um I guess since I had this written down earlier because I made the TikTok on it, but I also uh, put on a uh, notepad and then I access it access it through a different uh, google account i don't have it now but um i have the original where i assume you got your uh arguments from and you you laid it out clear which i appreciate because 50 premises are uh not as fun to deal with can i i'm just gonna ask you a question see if you uh, like agree with it so i believe okay. this is your third premise where you said uh, like essentially no potential can be actualized unless something already actual actualizes it right it's the principle of causality um no my third premise says the actuality of something's being is the description of its existence so like if well, i then uh, does your sorry because i i literally couldn't write it down unless you want to send it to me but anyway like do you agree with the sentence no potential can be actualized unless something already actual actualizes it i uh, yeah i would say yes okay so the reason i say that is because i think that this this goes into one of your premises because one of your premises is essentially uh something must ex like there must be an actualized being to actualize something else because something cannot change unless it's actual unless it's uh, acted upon by another substance right that seems yeah. to be the core. Yeah. So in that case, <clears throat> I don't know how well aware you are of like stuff like quantum mechanics, but um, it seems to – quantum mechanics is, does an interesting thing where we go super far down into a, what we can actually interpret and see, and we, we realize something, that when we go into it, cause and effect, which is essentially the law of causality, like something causes another that has to be actualized, kind of disappears. It, it not, not necessarily gets broken, but it points to a heavy direction toward being broken, where we're able to see something up, uh, as, uh, essentially just disappear and appear out of nowhere uh, just through itself. There's nothing that's been actualized upon it that we can visibly see, but I would make a claim that there was, like saying that something actual did happen upon it would be saying something we don't know, right? Like just to assume that, oh, the reason this quantum mechanics happened where something can appear in one area and, dis and re uh, reappear in another area and be the exact same matter form, that is actualizing upon itself. It's not an actualized thing actualizing another thing. It is simply the one thing actualizing itself, which you seem to disagree with. Wait, so are you talking about um, the spooky thing from a distance? Spooky, <laughs> pardon? Um, I'm pretty sure that it's like, like uh, basically like if you have uh, two... I can't remember what it's called, Is but it like you have door, two electrons that are in a completely different place, um, but they're somehow connected to each other. So if you change, no, so in quantum in quantum mechanics, there's literally just, a, just an understanding of things literally disappearing in, in through thin air and then reappearing in a different in a different spot, and we're able to see this through different uh, measurements. I think we can Google it together. Uh, like uh, like I think just bringing uh, quantum mechanics, uh, things appearing from nothing, we're able to see how like certain particles either blink in and out of existence as we can tell or like as we can we can uh, confirm so this quantum mechanic theory this idea that these things are actualizing themselves place, um, now but it seems to destroy your argument other, at least so that, so that presupposition quantum, at least the law of causality because quantum mechanics is something that is so like complex that we don't necessarily even understand and, and, so it's hard to make these claims saying that cause and effect has to be a, uh, a universal law that must be accepted but we're literally witnessing something that seems to be undermining the idea of cause and effect right but I feel like you're I feel like you're presupposing that there's that 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 there's something uh, that isn't causing um, it to appear and reappear. Well, yeah, like, you're right. But I'm not making a definitive claim. I'm simply saying cause and effect seems to be being undermined in this situation. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. Or I'm not saying that it's not being affected, but no one could ever say that it is right. Like you can't well, make the claim that, no cause and effect that, is affecting that's just it. like appealing. But isn't that just an appeal? To, like that just means that we aren't aware of what um, of what's happening in that situation. Oh, sorry. I mean, so are you wait? So in your answer, are you just getting an answer based off like we're just making a guess off of what we know? Is that what you're saying? Like you don't have a definitive answer. You're just saying it's a guess. I mean, yeah, pretty much. I mean, like so you're uh, saying I guess God exists instead of I know God that, exists. Like, from... What you're saying? I guess God exists and not I know God exists. Well, I mean, no, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm guessing that God exists, but I'm saying that we, uh, in every single thing else that we observe, right? Things that uh, things that are in their actual state don't. Uh, they they don't change unless acted upon by something else. Of course. So I mean, like, 
if you're like if you're right about this that there absolutely is no uh cause and effects in qu quantum physics then i mean sure i guess you'd be right but i mean i don't think we can come to uh, a conclusive yeah. state so that... i'll go i'll go further in on this like this this whole uh, idea as a whole i'm not making the claim that cause and effect is wrong i'm simply saying that this cannot be demonstrated to be cause and effect if you you are the one that is saying well it is we just can't see it yet you're appealing to this th sort of intuition and that's not how metaphysical understandings work when we talk metaphysics when we talk the essence of being you know when we talk what created everything is their initial mover you're making a definitive claim we know this but it seems you don't know this when you say something like well we don't know we just presuppose that it is happening, or just not through our visible lens, we're presupposing that this thing is happening. And from my understanding, you're not presupposing God's existence, you're claiming God's existence, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so could you explain to me how you're claiming God's existence when you're presupposing your main argument for God? Okay, um, well, the thing is, is that with this, okay, can, can you, like, show me this quantum physics things, I guess, because I don't... Yeah. Let's let's so um it, like this is fuck this is why I, I wish I brought it uh I didn't close my has on my computer oh shit I just opened it quantum physics like are you aware of oh shit what's the word I think it's like sto stoicism like our computers like quantum computing we use this uh okay. shit where is it uh oh yeah uh sto stochastic or something like that s t a o c h a s t i c which is just purely random like uh things that exist in today which we 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 have uh multiple ideas for quantum physics is one of them quantum physics appearing from nothing uh ah oh, fuck you know see this is the hard uh what you call it? is temporary appearance of energy particles oh yeah here it is quantum a quantum fluctuation where essentially these these uh, particles essentially appear through light and then they disappear and appear somewhere else not necessarily matters just being created out of nowhere except it could be it seems to be that these things are just traveling through through space they're traveling through a distinct location based on only themselves right because we can't observe literally anything else so when we i, I can send a wiki the wiki article quantum fluctuation i just didn't know the actual word i just knew it existed in quantum physics because Fuck, I'm not going way too hard into quantum physics. I already tried. I tried that. <laughs> I tried that earlier this week because I, I really went into it. I went into like this like un quantum physics understanding like what shit happens. And it just seemed so complex. It's just easier to let like the scientists explain it. It's, just, it's a mutually uh, understood topic, quantum physics. And quantum physics just seem to be existing and true. And av based on that, we're able to see that these things just appear through out of nowhere and reappear somewhere else, you know? Not necessarily they're just being created, but like it could be that they go smaller. We just can't tell. So okay. you get, you can make the claim that it's like cause and effect, but you can't prove that. Okay, yeah, yeah, I I understand. Like, okay, I can't necessarily understand what you're saying. That um that even if something were uh to be causing them to go into that state, it would be so small to the point where I wouldn't be able to uh, tell. Okay, I mean, um, yeah, you just can't. Hmm. All right. So I'm I'm confused. Okay. So th this would uh this would undermine uh my argument because like if this were the only scenario where like such a thing happened, I don't understand how that would um uh are you saying that the universe would just be able to um actualize its own potential to change uh to to change just uh just I'm from that's a possibility, of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is see. This is where I go into. We're overestimating our ability to use pure reason. You know, there are just some things we don't know. This is in my original TikTok that like we're you right now. You're making a definitive claim. We know a first mover or God exists, and I'm like, holy shit, that's a crazy claim. How can you back that up? And there's so many things going against it. And then we we continue down this rabbit hole because I for one don't make any claims about like the first mover. Like it seems to me, I presuppose that like everything must be physical because I'm a physicalist. So like I say there's no God, but I can't prove there's no God, right? Just like I don't think anybody in their right mind could prove a God based on just the idea of like quantum physics. And we can look at history. We can see things where people said, this is provable. This is fact, like pure randomness. Pure randomness exists as we can see in quantum physics. And like with the split experiment where it's like a 50% chance sometimes where it comes through one side of a slit and another side of the slit. We're able to look at these quantum physics like understanding and just how we look at things and how they change that there is pure randomness. There seems to be just things appearing out of nowhere and self-actualizing. And there also seems to be 
different instances in history where we thought something was concrete and evident simply pure th through pure reasons like the idea that the earth was the center of the universe this was just brought upon by the idea that we were able to look out and see things rotating around us therefore we are the center of the universe like there there are these things that we see with our eyes and believe wholeheartedly because it logically makes sense but then we realize through later evaluation that they're just wrong so making a definitive claim like a god exists is just undermining all of philosophy and like science okay okay um I, uh, I understand what you're saying. Okay, so um, with quantum fluctuation, I, I believe you said uh, double slit. So I think you're talking about the double slit experiment. Where well, that was another one. That was a, this, that's a separate entity, not quantum fluctuation. Okay. Um, so so, I don't think it is, at least. Okay, so it, it's just um, like, so quantum fluctuation is just the probability of uh, a particle existing uh, in, a, in a place, right? Uh, essentially, not probability. It's I think. Well, I think I think so. It's more along the lines of uh, th uh, particles reappear or disappear and then reappear out of like essentially thin air. Like, and it's just the probabilitical standards of like where it's going to appear. That's how we're able to make calculations in quantum physics. It's literally just taking probability and then trying to mathematize it. You know. Okay. Same thing with and, the double. Thing, and you know? so far, and so far, like with all with all research in this field, there there has been um like zero understanding of anything that could possibly cause it to um yeah to, to it, it's it, it, there's zero simply because we don't have any means to measure it because every time we try to like essentially when we try to look at these these particles these super like when we bash atoms together boom there are these particles that are essentially quantum physics that we look into and try to understand the reasoning this is the shit that destroyed uh, einstein's general relativity because gravity doesn't work with quantum physics but quantum physics is like is, is is seen to be as like the, the good shit, you know. Quantum physics seem to be the correct answer, and that's how we got like a uh, the idea of a uh, fuck uh, string theory. Because string theory, we essentially looked super hard at these things, and we saw like these blobs. You no, know, we couldn't really determine everything, so we just assumed oh strings, and we tried to do that. Turned out that was wrong. But there's it's just super a bunch of science has been done, and we just don't know. Like this seems to be that they are just self actualizing. These particles are just moving themselves and just appearing and disappearing out of nowhere, but. Like there could be, but then again, we can't make any definitive statements about like this logical following. And even if we could, we're still taking a meta ethical, we're still taking a metaphysical like presumption of there must be a god for a medical, uh, metaphysical framework to work. And, okay. and and we're just kind of ruining that by throwing it into logic. Because meta, okay, so, meta yeah. Um, I'm okay. So looking at this, I'm seeing the Casimir effect, which is something that uh someone brought up to me earlier. So. A, is this does this quantum fluctuation like happen like can it like literally happen anywhere or does it only happen in like specific areas like you know like oh quantum fluctuation can only happen in a vacuum or quantum fluctuation cannot happen in a vacuum or does it literally just happen literally everywhere well it doesn't matter if it, i i don't know it doesn't matter if it's in either why well yeah because if um because of if it's in a certain area you can maybe mathematize it like probably just a certain area because we could then apply math to it that's how we can do quantum physics it doesn't mean it just doesn't it isn't purely it's purely random like okay so if there if it if it needs a specific if it needs a specific area to act in this way then uh -huh. i just say that that area would be the um would be the external force that allows it to exist in that manner wait what could you tell me what that area is then if it's an external force well, I'm I'm saying like because that's what I that's why I asked you like um so, the I mean like we're just running with it and like say yes I'm trying to help your argument so we need this if we need this what what is it what is this actualizer what is actualizing? Well, yeah the the area would be the actualizer that allows um that allows particles to uh appear okay, in well, quantum flux. How does it do that? What do you mean? How does it actualize it? Because we can tell oh to actualize hot coffee and make it cold you add ice cubes. We know that the ice is the actualizer, but like how how does this space actualize these? Yeah, but I mean, even if you didn't know the um, like even if you didn't know, wouldn't mean that uh, it wouldn't be responsible for doing that. Like I mean, so say, yeah, like, you're if guessing. Someone didn't this know that an ice cube would cool something down just because they don't know doesn't mean that the ice cube isn't responsible for cooling. That's it down. true, but you also can't prove it because what we're talking about is literal proof. You're saying that we can prove God, and now you're falling back on well, it seems probable. That's not what I'm asking. That's not what your claim has been. It's always been we can prove. God. Well, okay. So it, I'm saying that if this if this is something that can only happen in a specific area, then it would seem to be that that area it causes it to be that way. Um, okay, I mean, but I don't, what causes it to be like, that way? The 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 area that it's in. Like if you're saying that. Okay, so 
because the Casimir effect is something where matter acts in a specific way, or yeah, matter like fluctuates similar to this. Um, it, it fluctuates similar to this when it's inside of a vacuum. Um, and I, the, the vacuum is the reason why it, it begins to act that way. Like it doesn't just matter wouldn't act like that if it was outside of a vacuum. So the vacuum would be actualizing its potential to um, fluctuate. Wait, um, wait, so the cashmere, what, what? Okay, um, yeah, I'm, I'm reading the Wikipedia article. It says, another consequence is the Casimir effect. One of the first observations, which was evidence of vacuum fluctuation, um, was the lamb shift in hydrogen. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that if, if something... Uh, if something can only happen in a specific area, then it would appear that um, that area is actualizing its being uh, to it's actualizing its potential to be able to exist in that form. So, if, so explain to me how it would be doing that, because when we even if it's in a vacuum, we are still demonstrating that randomness purely exists, right? Well, yeah, yeah. So, what's the point of saying that? Well, because okay, it so seems it, you're, you're just saying like it seems this cashmere effect essentially. I believe it's just saying um, if we put it in a vacuum, we can uh, determine that this is going to be like blah blah blah, blah like all this shit's gonna happen. Like I don't know, I don't know what it is because I haven't seen it. But it seems if you look at this stuff and then it just reappears and appears out of nowhere, but it's only in a vacuum. That doesn't help your case. Well, no, it does because if you're if if it if we can chart where um like if we can chart where it goes when it's outside of a vacuum, but then when it's inside of a vacuum, it's purely random. Then we know that the vacuum is the thing that's causing its randomness. So the vacuum is the thing that's causing its randomness, but then yeah, so like random. Wait, wait, wait. So in, the, in that case, wait, wait. So when we say when we say cause its randomness, you realize when we say cause and effect, we can measure this effect, right? Well, I mean, not necessarily. You don't have to be able to measure an effect to know. That no, but that, that, that's occurs. cause out. So cause out essentially this cause. So this 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 cause uh, creates this effect, right? And we're able to we're able to trace it back. Now, if we go, uh, this particle appears here. This particle appears here. This particle appears here. This particle appears here, and we all trace it back to this one cause or this one uh this one like that. That's the effect. That's not truly a cause and effect because it's different for each and in, each individual one. The cause is essentially oh, it's in a vacuum. But if that's the case, if it's because it's in a vacuum, shouldn't we get the exact same answer? Um, no, not necessarily because if random, why not necessarily? Uh, because randomness would just be the state of being of the particle, like uh, that. So, that's when, just... so, I think you're trying to equivocate like randomness to being like this uh irref irrefutable fact of like being randomness isn't a being, randomness is literally defying all cause and effect, right? But I mean, okay, so uh, wouldn't you say that where something is is a characteristic of its being? Uh, I would say where something is, depending on like how it got there, yeah. Okay, so then, okay, okay, so it, it's not a character of the, the being of my laptop that it's, like, right here. It, mm -hmm. It's what caused it to be right here. That's but, we can, we can, but the problem is we can follow a string, you know, if we attach the string and then to your laptop, and then how did it get there? We're able to follow that back, and we could do that with almost every single laptop, right? Yeah. Sure, not the exact place, but we could get uh, an answer for how it got to that place. In this one, we can't. So there is no cause and effect because we cannot determine a cause to the effect. We can determine this thing happens in a vacuum. That could be one cause. But then what's the other cause that puts it in that spot, right? We don't know because it's unknown because it seems to be self-actualizing, right? Okay, but I mean that's not dependent. It's, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be dependent on multiple causes. Like if I okay, so Wait, if, like, how? If, I, if there's a string of if there's a string of connectedness, right? Like you can uh, repeatedly uh, bring my laptop right to my desk from where I bought it, right? Mm -hmm. And but but there's one scenario where my laptop just randomly appears, and you don't necessarily know why that is. Yes. If there's if there's a specific event. Or if there's a specific area where that would happen, then I then then you would that, say it's that somewhere in that area, right? Quiet. You'd say it's somewhere huh? in that area. You'd say it's somewhere in the that area where the effect happened. Well, okay, yeah, but the the effect the the, so the area guessing. would cause it to act the the area would cause it to act differently than we usually know it to act, though. 
So, wait, so yes, the area would cause it differently, but then we have to ask ourselves, what is making this cause, right? And if we don't know, you know, we say, oh shit, cause is a cause is happening. But that part is, if a cause happens to the exact same thing, so there's two identical things, and then I do one cause to one and one cause to another, you should get the exact same uh, uh, answer, right? If I uh, had... Uh, like if I had if I had a cup of coffee and I duplicate that cup of coffee and in the same instance in time I put ice cubes in it you'll get the exact ice cube in it the exact same ice cube in it in both you'll get the exact same cause now if I put these two particles these two quantum particles into this vacuum where they would start appearing and disappearing randomly why is it that you don't get the exact same answer because there's something else going on right it seems to be pure randomness showing that it it kind of can, can in this situation it seems to completely destroy cause and effect now you could say there's another thing causing this effect we just don't know it but that would undermine your argument of proving a god wait okay so okay but i mean with that same scenario right if you if you drop the if like if you take the two pieces of matter or the two particles right yeah. and you put it in one area and it acts in the way that we usually know matter to act and then you put it in another area um the, like per se a vacuum and it acts differently than we suppose it to act then mm -hmm. we'll come to the we can deductively uh conclude that its existence in that area causes it to act that way. Okay, so I think you just missed the point. So yes, I think that would cause a difference, of course. So a, va a vacuum would be a cause, but then we go on to the other cause. So if we took in two of the exact same particles and put them in the exact same vacuum, and then we see something, they disappear and appear in different locations, doesn't that show that another cause should is happening to give a different effect? That's the logical consistency of cause and effect, right? This is just this is just basic. Okay, so okay, so what what I'm okay, so what you're saying is that if you if you have two particles, right, and you put them both in a vacuum, but they don't follow the same path, mm -hmm. then it doesn't appear that uh, we. It we appears can't that, that there's we, another cause giving a different effect because if you see two diff if you see two of identical things and they do different things with the same effect i.e. putting them into a vacuum they should resort in the same conclusion unless there's another cause or it's self actualizing now if you say there's another cause that's that's an unknown and you're presupposing it but if you say it's self actualizing well that also seems to be uh, be a presupposition and you can't definitively make a claim for either Okay, but okay, so couldn't it just be um, a characteristic of its being to act randomly um, when it's when it's in a specific area? So it seems you just gave an example of self-actualization. It's a characteristic in the being that allows it to no, self-actualize randomness. No, because that 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 characteristic of its being can only be actualized when it exists in a vacuum. Okay, so if it exists in a vacuum, it has self-actualization. No, because the vacuum is actualizing its characteristic so, to act randomly. So what you're saying is the vacuum is offering another. So say um, when we say uh, self-actualization, right? When we actualize something, we have to we we look at it and go, okay, this is this thing self-actualizing itself? Is uh in inputting another uh, scenario, in inputting a an a, a cause into this thing, causing the exact same effect, right? And it seems to not be. You say, oh, it's it's a it's the same characteristic that's being actualized. But if it is, then both particles should act the same way, right? Okay, but okay. So the the, the issue is is that you're you're assuming that all all characteristics of something like okay. So if multiple changes occur, but but we can deduce that one. But we can deduce one cause and effect of of those changes that occur then i mean i would say that there's still a, the external actualization happening there like just because we okay but what is it the va the vacuum the vacuum okay, but is what's the uh, other one because there's good there has to be another right well no but we don't have to deduce for there to be another to realize that um we don't what have do we to do? deduce for there to be another for uh that for for the conclusion to be made that it's not actualizing itself in this situation but it is actually, or else how would there be getting, so then I ask, how would you be getting two different results? Well, I mean, the, okay, so the two different, the, the result is the, the result is the location, correct? The location of the particle in the vacuum. That's mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's, that's just, that's just one characteristic of it. And you know, like it, it's location uh, in a vacuum or like just. But how does it get there? 
we put it in the vacuum. Okay. So no. So, but how does it get to the certain spot? The reason I'm doing this because you're saying, oh, we're taking something actualized, a vacuum, and putting it onto these things that are also actualized, causing a change. But I'm going to connect this. When you when you admit that there is pure randomness in this particle, I'm then going to connect it to what about a particle that isn't in a vacuum, right? Okay, yeah, if there's a particle that isn't in a vacuum, then it, it still then has it that characteristic of randomness, meaning that it can self-actualize itself, right? No, no, no. Because, because so I the think characteristic uh, of randomness is dependent upon it being in a vacuum. I don't think that's true. I think that's a scenario where you could see it. Okay, well, uh, so what other what other areas uh, have we seen quantum fluctuation happen? We've literally, quantum so, um, okay, uh. Wait, uh, one sec. God. Okay, yeah, no. The the, yeah. the definition is literally vacuum state fluctuation or vacuum fluctuation. Well, yeah, that's because I, I assume this was the correct one. So, but like a part of uh, quantum physics part appearing and disappearing. There we go. Uh, this is because the scale particles are portion as have according to the laws of nature. Quantum mechanics. Oh God. They really can appear to a random state. Oh, Jesus. What's it called? I wish there was a. Oh, let's see. During high energy collisions, all sorts of particles can appear and disappear out of vacuum. Oh, during high energy collisions. So it seems during. So, uh, oh, God, I wish there was a, they had a term for this. But no, this is this is what I don't I don't like. I'll find the exact quote, I guess. But it seems. All right, there we go. Oh god, I keep finding these articles saying yes, but I can't get an actual word to link us to a wiki page. Like, do you know how many? Spatial separation between TV. Oh, the spatial separation between these two orbitals. Oh god, the electrons disappear from the ground state orbital and reappear in it. Oh, Jesus. What's this called? Do you know how to do that? Oh, it's so annoying. It exists. I'm just trying to find what it's called i hate quantum mechanics but anyway i can i mean we can talk more about uh because i think still in a vacuum i think this still helps my case right so we're not really put so in a vacuum nothing should really change between the particle right like we're not create we're not actualizing something else right oh wait so we can go saying? back like i i would find it i know this exists outside of it. it's just hard to find uh but um i i have no idea Okay, but we can go back to the vacuum because we can like look at it and we could say okay. we because we can look at this uh this this quantum mechanic. So nothing is essentially so when we say this thing is acting as a change, reference the Bohr model. I don't know what this is. God, does anyone have the answer I'm looking for? Because I know it exists. It's just because everyone keeps talking about it, but I just wish I could give it a name. Okay, but I mean, I would say that if, like, right, if this only occurs in a vacuum, then I would say that the efficient cause for it, um, the efficient cause would be the vacuum. I mean, the same way that, like, if I have, like, a block of wood, um, and, and then the block of wood becomes a chair, the efficient cause would be uh, carpentry, you know? Like, th that doesn't mean that, like, even if but there that's, was, like, that's, no a, other, that's a non analogous situation. Okay. My my point is though is that the the vacuum is what the vacuum is what like uh, causes it to occur in that way. Like it if it if it occurs like outside of a vacuum, then I mean like sure I guess that um that might pose a challenge against uh, causality, but of a. Or are you aware of the uncertainty principle? Um, the quantum mechanics. This this could have been such an easier way to go into. I just forgot about it because God, there's too much about this shit. Well, I never, uh, Nathan. To clarify, I never said that they do not occur. I'm saying we cannot know if it is through a causal process or through self-actualization. 
So um the uh the uh oh shit oh uh, the uh yeah the uncertainty principle is essentially when you look at a when you're looking at a, a quantum physics and you're looking at these uh, particles the uncertainty principle is essentially used to get that uncertainty because there is pure randomness in quantum physics we've established this and when this pure randomness happens it seems um there is oh god I wish quantum physics fuck me uh, quantum. The uncertainties and thus the quantum effects become very small and close. Oh, wait, no. Wait, I don't think. Wait, let me read this. A quantum fluctuation is the temporary appearance of energetic particles out of empty space, as allowed by the uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle states that for a pair of conjugate variables such as a position momentum of energy time, it is impossible to have a precisely determined value of each member of the pair at the same time. For example, a particle pair can pop out of the vacuum during a very short time interval. So it is random. Okay, yeah, but I don't see how it's um, randomness. I don't see how it's randomness matters because, as you just said, uh, like at the end there, that it occurs in a vacuum. Yeah, because so, no, so because it shows that it. The vacuum. So when we say self-actualized properties, we're able to demonstrate. It doesn't have to necessarily mean that it self-actualizes itself. We're just able to see this thing is causing itself to change. Yes, you introduce a vacuum, but after you introduce the vacuum, it seems to be completely random, meaning that there's a self-actualized property inside of this particle, right? Oh my God! Okay, right. No, that doesn't that 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 doesn't uh, mean that though. No, because... that, that's exactly what it means. It's a self-actualized okay. property of randomness, okay. whatever the randomness okay. aspect is. The quality of the quality of randomness could be dependent on the vacuum. I mean, how, like, how so? If it was, then we'd be able to determine which part would it be. Because we haven't seen it occur outside of a vacuum. So that, we have. Uh, so, so what we see, so we can see this uncertainty principle. It allow it, it it allows to be explicit in reality because of the answer. Uh, so let's read it again. Quantum fluctuation is a temporary appearance of energetic particles out of empty space has allowed by uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle states that for a pair of conjugate variables such as a, uh, is impossible to have precisely determined values of each member of the pair at the same time. So quantum physics exists in reality. A quantum phys physics exists in space in like in, in today. We have quantum physics and we know that this thing, field fluctuations, exists and they are 100% completely random and they can exist. And vacuums exist today too. Like a vacuum exists in the idea of a black hole, right? A black hole is essentially a vacuum. But we're able to look at these and we're able to say these things are demonstrated today and we're able to see that these properties, this cause and effect, if the cause is the vacuum, the effect should be the exact same for the particle. But the problem is it's not simply because there's a self-actualized property of randomness or the uh, the, uncer the uncertainty principle uh, acts upon this where there is something being self-actualized by this, uh, this particle allowing it to go into a different location even though the same effect has been placed upon it, right? Okay, yes, but like you said, a vacuum is something that's real. So, I mean, like, I don't, he, he, it doesn't so matter. You're not saying, so you're not saying it's real or not, because the, the vacuum okay. is also legitimately real as well. But this is the, where I think you, this is where I, I, we both, I think, forgot your argument for a second. Your argument was never for something to exist, it must be acted upon by an unactualizer. You were saying that something cannot be self actualized, or else that would completely undermine your argument saying, oh, wait, maybe something that we're not able to record self actualized itself to be able to create the universe, or to create something, right? So you're essentially saying, self-actualization cannot happen therefore there has to be an unactualized actualizer i am now saying that we can see self-actualization of something and then therefore determine that there is a probability however probably a hundred percent probably almost uh, almost almost as close to 100 percent as you can be that something self-actualized itself based on the stuff we've read or at least seen Okay, that no, sense? that doesn't that doesn't directly follow because if you're okay, so let's say that uh, you have all the properties of matter, um, okay. or all the yeah, and uh, there's some some of these properties are in its actual are in its current actual state, and some mm -hmm. of them are in a potentiality. Um, we could say that matter has the potential to uh, act randomly when it exists in a vacuum. So the, the matter would still be dependent upon its existence in uh, a vacuum to uh, start appearing around randomly inside okay. of it. So this would be so – th so again, I'll, I'll say it again. I probably wasn't as clear in my last one, but – what your art your argument this is yours your argument is that there can I, I guess i could fucking read it i guess like where is it uh uh no potential can be actualized unless something already actual actualizes it 
which we have now demonstrated is not true. That's one of your presuppositions, right? Okay, but I don't understand. I, I don't understand how the uncertainty principle. Uh, I don't understand how that establishes it because, because. you're basically just saying that you're basically saying that the randomness uh, of matter means that it's self actualizing itself. Yeah, like yeah. The, so the reason I say that is because there's two options. One, something that we can't visibly see is affecting it. Or two, it's self-actualizing itself, right? No, because, okay, that doesn't directly follow, though, because I'm saying that, like, it, if this if this is something that can only occur inside of a specific place, then, uh, then its ability to act randomly uh, must occur in that place. Wait, do you think, like, vacuums don't exist? No, I'm not saying that vacuums don't exist. I'm saying you believe, that. So you believe that, like the you you. I'm pretty sure I saw on your TikTok. You believe the universe has the has the uh, potential to be like, um, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then, what's what's so hard to understand that like something that can self actualize itself did? Because that's that that's just that's just a leap. I don't know because you're, you're, you're right. It is a leap. I don't really. I don't necessarily believe in self actualization, action. but we can't prove that it doesn't exist, right? Well, state don't. Uh, okay, but they, you, they you'd have to demonstrate that self actualization is possible that to demonstrate that it can't happen. I just did. No, you didn't. Because so then what? Then what is the cause? You tell me what the cause of when we put these particles in a vacuum and they come out in different locations, even though the same effect has happened to them. Why do they come out in different locations? There's been an, either an effect that happened that a different spot, or they self-actualized themselves to be able to go into a different spot. I don't care how it happened. We have two scenarios we have to look at, neither of which can be proven, but one of which demonstrates a self-actualization. If we can demonstrate a self-actualization, or we cannot prove that it is not that, your conclusion does not follow. Wait, so, okay, so you would agree that randomness is a quality? What do you, no. Okay, so then I don't I don't understand. Okay, so you're saying that uh, they they appear randomly, right? Yeah, I'm saying it, it seems so. Yeah. yeah. So and they have the potential to appear randomly. The potential to appear randomly? Uh, what is th based on like, what? Okay, so um, uh, particles have the potential to appear randomly. When you say appear randomly, what do you mean by that? Because cause and effect isn't random. Like, why are you like uh, here? Like, why are you thinking? Oh, if I can prove that like this cause affected randomness, therefore it's cause and effect. That's not how it works. No, randomness no, no, no. isn't like. I'm saying that, okay, so you're. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand. Uh, you. I'm trying to understand your argument. So you're saying that obviously you're saying that uh, in quantum fluctuation randomness exists. We can't necessarily um, mark out the self-actualization mark out the location um and if we do mark out the location we can't mark out the momentum well so what i'm saying is quantum fluctuation exists it exists in reality today quantum fluctuation points to two answers to why these particles appear in different locations one of which is self-actualized property that we don't know or the other is there's an effect going on in that vacuum that therefore affects or that therefore gives off this randomness effect right Okay, so the why why is randomness not a property? Um, why is appearing randomly not a property of a particle? What do you mean appearing? So it what do you mean appearing? So this this is where I think you're getting confused because appearing randomly that's not an effect because cause and effects aren't random. Wait, no, no, no. Okay, so I'm just confused when you say randomly because if if you concede to anything random, you then concede that there's a self actualized property or something we don't know causing the effect. Okay, so you would say that, would you say that it, it is a quality of my laptop that it currently exists three feet above my floor? What? Yes. Okay, why? so, okay, yeah. So if, if location is a quality, then the randomness of location would be a quality of particles, correct? No. Okay, why why doesn't that so follow? So the location, so so we have to we have to look at this. When you say randomness of location, you're trying to group two things together that you can't. If we said location of particles is a quality, yeah, that could work because we could say, oh, because of cause x, the effect y put particle at distance z, right? We could say that. But if you say, well, cause y affected particle x that put it at distance who knows what. We can't say that because there's a logical impl uh, implication that there is something in between there causing the location to be different each time, right? Uh, okay. I mean, I'm really just not understanding why randomness couldn't be a quality of uh, of, of, of a particle. 
Because when you say quality of a particle, that implies that randomness is like legit. Like something can be truly random. We would have to ask, well, how could it be truly random? What about what part of this vacuum is making these quantum physics particles truly random, right? Okay, but if we can okay, so if we can deduce that the vacuum is what's causing it to to um to appear randomly, then no, I don't can't. think we necessarily need to know what yeah, aspect but, but, of the but, vacuum. But we, we we can't. Okay, the so then so then where else can quantum fluctuation occur outside of a vacuum? No, so you're saying uh like if I like um say there was only one way like I'm trying to think of an analogy. Like say there was only one thing, like say um I was in a box, right? Say me yeah. and my girlfriend were in a box and then my girlfriend shot me. You say, Well, that happened because they were in a box. That's not that's not necessarily true, is it? <laughs> No, because that that's uh, that's completely <laughs> Basically what different. you're saying. <laughs> that's completely different. No, no, no. If we were okay, so if there was a situation where everybody's guns in the world didn't work, but when you were inside of a box, your gun did work, and your whoa, girlfriend. Whoa, whoa, you whoa, 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 whoa! How do you know that it only appears in a vacuum? Okay, no, but we literally haven't. Science hasn't deduced that quantum fluctuation. Like, I'm in, so in the, just because in science the hasn't deduced something of, means that we can definitively make a claim that it must ought be true. No, but I mean, what? Then why are you arguing we should? Literally, quantum fluctuation is literally subtitled as vacuum state fluctuation. Yeah, because we're able to recognize it in a vacuum. But the matter okay. is, vacuums okay. exist in the real world. So, and this goes back to my original point, where it doesn't matter if something has already been actualized by another actualizer. All that matters is this essence is actualizing itself. I mean, no, that's not true. Because okay, so if oh, okay, what so about the vacuum it, makes it random? Huh? What about the vacuum makes the particle predict randomly? But we don't have to know what part of it. Uh, it we what, do. What part of? No, because that's that's not that's not necessary. So you're saying that there's a the, randomness effect in the particle? I'm saying that the randomness of the particle could be um the the randomness of the particle is a property that exists in a potentiality that when exists in a vacuum is actualized. Okay, how can you say that? Because we cannot, uh, because we cannot visualize uh, quantum fluctuation happening outside of a vacuum. Okay, so so this this goes in, so just because we cannot visualize it means you can now definitively say that it must be this that caused it. No, you can't. Okay, okay, but so why uh, are you if, trying if, to? If, if this isn't something that if this isn't something that can literally happen anywhere, then it happens in certain places. Correct. Like okay. even if you're saying that a vacuum isn't the only place, unless it unless quantum fluctuation can literally occur everywhere, then I don't see. Um, so I don't, care, I don't care. I don't care if it. I don't. I don't care if it appears in just a simple fucking millimeter of a box in my hand. All that matters is there's a randomness effect going on. What is that? There is no such thing uh, under your idea. There's literally no such thing as random because everything can be traced back to an effect, or else randomness would be considered a, a self actualizer. Right, the randomness, i.e., uh, if something was one or two, and the pic the picture of it is truly random, something inside that being chose one or chose two. Something self actualized to choose one or two. So this randomness effect that you keep saying is like, oh, it's a quality of this thing that doesn't exist in the field of cause and effect. There is no such thing as random in cause and effect. So I don't know why you keep saying this randomness is a part of a quality of this particle. Okay, okay, we're the. The um the people that like the people that uh the people that found quantum fluctuation right uh -huh. they they said they said random they used the uncertainty principle because they weren't certain um what what it was you know like it just because so ran it obviously you're self actualized I am or... just saying that in my worldview randomness cannot exist but I mean the yeah, but it seems to exist in this uncertainty principle we only use that as a variable because we can't deduce that yet. But that doesn't yes. mean. So, yeah, yeah, no. So I, you can't okay. make a definitive statement. No, 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 no. That's okay. That's that's completely different because if something can only happen in a certain area, whether whether uh, whether it just be a vacuum or whether it be like multiple things that we can't see yet, unless quantum fluctuation can happen like literally everywhere, then just simply pointing out the uncertainty principle doesn't get you to something. Why does that's that matter? Why does it matter if it's only in a certain spot? I'm curious. Because if it can only if something can only happen in a certain spot, then that certain spot is the thing that actualizes it to be able to happen in that okay, way. Okay, so now, so you, so so you just made a claim, right? So that claim 
is that this vacuum is what is causing these particles going under the exact same effect to give different outputs, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so if that's the case, that's not how cause and effect works. So do you know how cause and effect works? Okay, no, but the uncertainty principle is like literally, it's it's a variable. It's not Why just can't be, you just answer the question? So cause and, so you understand cause and effect doesn't work with randomness, right? It cannot. Uh, yeah, it literally sure. cannot. Okay, so if you just said sure, you just demonstrated how cause and effect doesn't work with the uncertainty principle, showing that your conclusion based on the principle of causality is incorrect, showing that God does not necessarily exist. No, but okay, so dude, it, it, the uncertainty principle is is a variable in quantum equations. Mm -hmm. it, it's not it's the, the random like we call it random because you know, we currently don't know uh Exactly. We currently don't know that conclusion, right? Exactly. So yeah, but uh because it's a variable, it doesn't mean that there's not something that that there's not it's not possible that I something I 100% is. agree with you. I probably I I personally think there is but when you make a claim such as a god exists, you must be able to prove that this quantum mechanics is based off of cause and effect and not something uncertain, which you can't. But the cause, the cause would be the, the I don't. The cause I'm, would be the fact and the effect the, would be something I random that you just that you just demonstrated how randomness doesn't work in cause and effect. No, but okay, so at the. So the entire the entire equation is deducing the location. the The uncertainty principle is uh, the uncertainty principle is a variable in the entire equation. Yeah. So the um the vacuum is the thing is is the cause of of it being able to uh, is the is the reason why it's able to be uncertain. Oh shit! You know that? How? How so? Because okay, so okay. So uh, you would agree that we can't – okay, we're currently not existing in a vacuum, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay. The, the, the atoms of your body are not randomly disappearing from you right now. Uh, that's true. Well, act actually in space they do, but not in my body, no. Okay. So if the if the atoms are your of the if, not, if know, you know, know, like we, we haven't we haven't experienced right even so like even if you're saying that it's a possibility that this can occur outside of a vacuum it doesn't necessarily mean that this can because for for this to for for your uh, reasoning to be true it would have to be able to happen everywhere for it to be completely self actualized okay can I can I answer this yeah sure so that conclusion doesn't follow. Because when we say self-actualized, there's an indication. So, there's, so I'm not even necessarily pointing to self-actualization. I'm pointing to cause and effect breaking. Because I want to disprove the, uh, the principle of causality. Because that's what your argument relies on. Your argument relies on there must be a cause. No potential can be actualized unless something already actual actualizes it. So we have to look at something inside this vacuum. I don't care if it's the vacuum that causes itself to be self-actualized. All I know is inside this vacuum randomness occurs inside the vacuum and pops out when they when they're released in a random location now there's three things go there's three things going on here one a vacuum is there two a particle is there and three a particle is appearing and reappearing essentially out of thin air inside this vacuum at random so this random is what we have to look at what is causing this random you say it's a vacuum but if it was the vacuum that was causing this randomness then each particle would be in the exact same position simply because if you put the same cause to the same variable you will get the same effect right i mean no that doesn't necessarily follow because i mean if you're okay so the vacuum there's no reason why a vacuum shouldn't be able to compute multiple outcomes what do you mean compute multiple outcomes? What? So, okay. So, uh, if you like, there's, I don't, I don't understand why there, so if you put like two things in a vacuum, right? Uh -huh. I don't, I don't see why things. it doesn't follow that the, I don't see the exact why, same why it follows that that vacuum has to spit them out in the same location. Well, because when we talk, so, okay. So what is, so we have to talk <laughs> what's happening here. If an effect happens to a variable, say there's two of the exact same variables, which that's what quantum mechanics is, is they're the exact same variables and this effect happens to both of them, and they're both the exact same, 
naturally through cause and effect, you should get the exact same solution because there's the only two instances that are happening to this op. That's the only instance happening to this object. All that's happening is these two variables are being introduced to a vacuum, the exact same cause, and then they're outputting a different effect. Now we look at this through the idea of cause and effect. This shouldn't be possible, but we're able to then conclude that it is either uh, something else is happening inside that vacuum or two, there is something self-actualized about the uh, proton or the, uh, the, 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 the variable, right? Because if cause and effect was true, the exact same effect should happen based on the exact same cause to the exact same variable, right? That's just how no, I don't works. think that. Okay, so because look, here's the this thing. This is man. your argument. It's the law of causality. Like we we can read it. No potential can be actualized until something already actual uh, actual actualizes it. So there sh can not be a different position if the exact same actualizer actualizes it. Okay, uh, the the reason why I bring up the vacuum is that 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 could be that's one actualizer in the that's one actualizer in the equation yeah. so i'm saying that if we can if we can deduce that there is one actualizer in the equation we don't have to deduce that other actualizers exist in the equation for it to uh appear in that form we literally do because well, it doesn't why do you, matter why do you have to do that because it seems you're arguing like oh something has to beget itself which you already disagreed with because you believe there's an eternal unit there's the possibility of an eternal universe so you are so we're just trying to prove that cause and effect might not work because you've already conceded to the idea of something uh, created or something always existing. So now we're looking at self-actualization. self actualization So we can make this an equation. The equation for an equation doesn't work. If we have variable X and variable B, B is vacuum and X is the particle. If we have X plus B and we get four, and then we put the exact same equation, X plus B, and we get five, you would imagine that there's another variable somewhere in there or one of the variables changed. Okay, but okay. So here's the thing, though. If we if we take those same exact uh, equations, and uh, and a variable B is the vacuum, right? Yep. Um, let's just say that a variable C is uh, anywhere else, like outside of a vacuum, or like I guess the universe as we know it, like currently, or I don't know what is what is not a vacuum. I don't know what that word would mean, but well, I, just, I don't know. Okay, it's not a vacuum. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Let's just say variable C is not a vacuum, and then we do X plus C, and that equals the same every single time, right? Uh -huh. Then we can deduce that variable B being different from C causes uh, causes the randomness. Or uh, No, we can't. We literally that. can't because that's not how causality works. You don't understand your own argument. Cause, so I just literally gave you a, a, an example. So we we are looking at two things i don't care what else is introduced like they're there yes these two could get the exact same answer 50 billion times in a row i don't care what we're looking at is the instance where you don't get the same answer and then you have to naturally occur to something that hey something is causing us to get a different answer in this equation there could be a hidden variable or one of the variables could be changing mid equation and that's what we have to look at both of which undermine the idea that you are presupposing that a god must exist okay so the the reason why i brought up the that the previous point right with the um variable c and the variable b is because if you if you have two different variables and and uh, um one variable produces randomness and the other variable produces um an exact answer every single time then you can deduce that something about uh that variable is causing uh, variable X to the, uh, to create a different answer each time. So that's not how causality works. So I'm sharing my screen. We're gonna go through this uh, together because okay. that's not how causality works. So how causality works, where's my boy paint? There it is. So causality works is a cause and effect. So cause, which is A, plus uh, another cause, which is B, will get the effect C. So in this scenario, vacuum plus particle is equal to, we'll say four, the position is four, whatever that means. And then in another instance, vacuum plus particle equals five. How do we get, oh gee, my writing is atrocious, equals five. How do we get here, right? How are these different if they're the exact same variables? You have to assume something, either V is changing mid equation or P is changing mid equation, or there's another hidden variable, we'll put it over here, it'll be plus C, which is like a coefficient. So there is something here. 
Now, causality shows that one of these two has to be the case. P is changing or V is changing, or there's a hidden variable. That's what causality means. So there has to be a cause and effect. But the problem is we don't know that. It could be a self-actualized. In this scenario, there'd be a self-actualization. In this scenario, there would be causality, and it would just be another hidden variable that we don't know about, right? The bad part is we don't know which it is so we can't definitively say if it's true or not meaning that you cannot definitively say that a god must exist please tell me anywhere where this doesn't make sense and i'll try to go over it again okay why okay so why doesn't variable v self-actualize mm -hmm. itself anywhere else what do you mean self -act like in this yeah variable self-actualize the um this one. Since P is the uh, particle, right? The P is particle and V is vacuum. Okay, so yeah, why doesn't P self-actualize itself anywhere else? P self, I, I, I don't care. And what do you mean? No, 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 because it that's the matter. That's because, so, so all we're proving right now is that there must be a causality that is happening that disproves your argument, which is being proven right now. I don't care if it doesn't I care. I don't care if it only happens one time. If we can demonstrate that it does, which we can, all we have to point to is the fact that causality is not necessarily true. Okay, but you're saying that okay, so if P if mm -hmm. P if we're saying that it's a possibility that P self-actualizes itself, yeah, then we we have to ask why can't why can't P self-actualize itself anywhere else? I don't I don't care for the answer. All we know is that it can self-actualize itself in a vacuum, right? Okay, no, but it's essential that if something can't if something can't uh, self-actualize itself anywhere, then oh. if, if it can't yeah, if it can't self self-actualize itself in any possible place or any uh -huh. possible scenario that you give it, then why? Um, then, then we have to ask why why that is because if there if you if you have a, two variables in an equation, and in P exists like it, it P just exists, you know, and like P exists as four, or whatever you want to put it as, uh, unless it's added with another variable. If another variable is added and then you come to the conclusion that there's different numbers, then something about that variable that you added is causing it to uh, exist in that manner. Of course. Okay, so if something, if, if that added variable causes it to exist in that manner, mm -hmm. then can't we say that uh, v, uh, that variable V causes P to exist randomly? No, that would be variable C that causes P to exist randomly. Wait, okay, so what's what's C in this equation? So C is what you just described, that hidden variable we don't necessarily know about. That would be 100% true, and that would be 100% mean the principle of causality is correct if this C exists, right? Okay, no, 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 because the um, because variable V, if variable, if when added with variable V is the only situation in, in, in which... A, in which it's random then yeah. we know that variable v is necessary for it to exist randomly no we don't so we so we say we do because that's the only time we've been uh we've been shown it but you're also making another assumption there and all you're trying to do here because you're trying to prove something is not make assumptions you're assuming it cannot so, sure right now logically it might seem that it could only appear in v but even if it did only appear in v that still destroys the essence of causality right no, it doesn't, because if it can only exist in variable v, then v is the reason why it's uh, then it's the reason why it's able to act randomly. So, no, because what would be happening is so let's let's just let's uh here, file new. Let's go over yours. So we have v plus p, and then are we adding another? No, because it's okay. So I mean. So this is sure this you could say that like uh, there's another very sure you could say that there's another variable added in that situation, okay. but that's uh, but if v is a necessary part of that equation for uh it, for for um e for the random for it, for it to change yeah for for that to change or exist un uh, uncertainly then uh, then v is necessary um obviously v is a necessary for it to be affected in that in that way. <sighs> So it doesn't, so it, even if V is necessary for that, like if the idea of like, oh, it cannot be random unless it's in V, there is still that randomness aspect, right? 
So now, so I can even grant that, that it only happens in V. Now we have to continue. So it only happens in V. I'll, I'll concede that. I don't really care. So if it only happens in V, what is causing the, the, the different answers? But that, okay, so that, that's not necessary. Okay, so if V, okay, so I, I don't see how um, it's necessary for another variable to exist. If V causes uh, you to get a different answer each time, but then V just causes you to get a different it, answer it, it each does, time. It doesn't cause you to get a different answer each time. Uh, because if it did, that's not how causality works. That's not how like that's not how uh, cause and effect works. We're we're re we're uh, nearing the end of the time slot. Also, I think you guys are kind of running in a bit of a circle and not really. Uh, I just want to do one more sentence. I just want to do one. More. So if, if okay. so, it, uh, it print the principle of causality can almost always be represented in an equation. That, that's why it's so cool. Well, yeah. You always look at this cause versus this effect. And then when you say that equation doesn't matter, you're undermining the principle of causality, well, therefore destroying um, your argument. Omni, omni, omni. Okay, so it, it, we're going to have a closing statement to end, to capstone this, to capstone the debate anyway, so you don't need to, like, get out your final thoughts right now. Uh, we'll, we'll, um, I think we've kind of reached a stopping point here. You guys have kind of reached a, um, a point that you can't kind of overcome here. So I think it's good for us to kind of stop the debate now or um, get to the end of the debate, which would be the closing statements. Uh, as we let we've apologists go first last time, we'll let him go uh, first this time. We've apologists uh, make a closing statement. Uh, just explain a little bit about what you think uh, your points were in this debate, summarize it a bit, and then why why do you win this debate? Why do you come come off the head? Um, okay, so I mean, I don't necessarily think that uh, there was uh, a conclusion to this debate uh, necessarily. So I don't think the either person necessarily edged over the other person. But, um, you know, I argued uh, for for causality uh, as an argument for God. And uh, we demonstrated uh, an equation. I said that uh, the vacuum was the reason for the different outcome. And um, he disagreed and said that there had to be uh, another variable for the different outcome to occur or the variable P is the reason uh, or variable P is self-actualizing itself. So that's pretty much the conclusion that we came to. All right. Go ahead. Then, yeah, I'll go. So um, as much as uh, it would be nice if neither of us uh, got the head up on each other, I 100% think I did get the head up on you simply because of the idea of when it comes to the law of causality, you have to be able to represent it in an equation. You have to be able to point to this thing causes this, which causes this, which causes this, which gives effect Z. And if you did the same thing with the exact same answers, you would get the exact same. You get the exact same answer. And then when we look at this, I don't really care what is self-actualizing. It's either the vacuum is self-actualizing itself or the particle is self-actualizing itself. You can argue the vacuum is, but I don't think that's true because you have to prove that a vacuum would be able to do that but that's beside the point what i'm able to demonstrate is that causality is not a definitive answer that we know about today we're presupposing causality and we can we can show that it's a presupposition simply from the idea of quantum physics where we're able to give this essentially random idea we don't know what it is but we do know that it seems to be random if we can demonstrate that it seems to be random we can then demonstrate that causality is not a uh, it is not a truth it is not a 100 guarantee therefore using causality to prove the existence of god means you're not proving the existence of god you're guessing the existence of god based on something that cannot be proven and that's all i want to demonstrate this entire debate i think i did that very well and i think um the problem happened when it seemed we didn't understand what uh the principle of causality was okay uh that was a interesting debate that we had uh today i thought both sides uh gave decent arguments for their propositions in general uh i want to thank the theist type house and especially weeb apologists for coming on to the progressive powerhouse and debating us it was a great opportunity and i uh, hope you enjoyed uh your experience with us uh with that i think we will end the debate um i'll end the stream any final memes any final remarks anything to uh capstone uh, i hope that spencer kid uh, gets the balls to debate me Right, because they sent. Uh, the I hope that dumbass will be able to actually talk to me without running away. Oh, okay. Uh, those are some fighting words on me, but uh, <laughs> um, it seems to be that uh, we are probably going to do some kind of group debate uh, with the progressive powerhouse and the theist type house, which would be really awesome uh, because I know we both got some really smart people on our sides, and it'd be great to hash those ideas out. Um, however, I think today, or sorry. We're already having this debate today. Right now, uh, we're going to end the stream. I'm glad all you guys started watching.